Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wire Dirty Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 29. As we get up there higher, it's hard for me to remember. My name is Keith. This is Doug. How are you feeling this week, Doug? Doing good. I'm uh, getting used to this new iPhone. You know, we talked about that last week. If you all haven't had a chance to either listen or watch that, it's uh, pretty good. Me getting used to this new ecosystem. You still loving it? Oh, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, I've texted you a lot over the last... I week, know what he's going to say. Over the last two weeks, whatever. And is I know like what he's going to say. Is there a nuclear reactor on this thing, or what's going on here? <laughs> he's talking about the battery, guys. He's talking about the battery. <laughs> Uh, so just to break it down, you know, I have or I had with my Android chargers uh, spaced out everywhere. And I'm like, OK, so I'm here. There's a charger here. If I'm away, battery banks. There's a charger. Work. Anytime Doug and I would go anywhere out to dinner, Comic Con, he always had a battery bank with him. Yeah. You always had those. Like, yeah. So because yeah. I knew my Android is going to die. So How, how's that? How's that going now? <laughs> do you? Do I even charge this thing? <laughs> I know. What was it you said? What what kind of a demon black magic uh, is this? As he was yeah. texting me, he's like, because I think he, uh, you had gone, I don't remember how long, and he was sending me like the update. You said, it's at the end of the day, I have 44% left and I've been using it all day or whatever it was. I don't remember yeah. what that was. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. I mean, and I kept not... telling you, it's yeah. got good battery, man. I'm not doing uh, video editing or anything, but I'm watching movies, texting, talking on the phone, like all the stuff you did uh, on your Android. Yeah. Heavy internet research, stuff like that. And my uh, Android would need to be charged up two or three times. Now, my theory, I have a theory on this. Um, It is got to be the efficiency of the operating system. Because if you remember when your Android, when items were open, they took up a lot of memory and Mm -hmm. it still sucked battery away so i think it has something to do with the ios system puts things in like a passive memory state and it doesn't drain battery i i i swear the way they have to be achieving it is with the way the operating system handles applications and what's drawing power and whatnot because when i had an android 2 it was it sucked battery all the time and i was always closing apps to try to like i was doing everything dim in the screen all that kind of stuff. So, yes, I'm very impressed. You know, I used to charge my Android every night. I don't charge this thing at all, hardly. So <laughs> I'm very happy. That's awesome. Well, that's good. I'm glad it's going well for you. Yeah. I, I told him before we started the podcast, I was hearing a little whoosh and the sounds like that on his phone. I'm not used to hearing Apple sounds on your, on no, your side of it. That's great. Yeah. I'm, the best I'm part is all the things. our group chat. He's blue now. Hey. <laughs> All right, you ready to to do some nerd news, man? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. And I'm going to go ahead and get the share up. You know, we didn't have anything scheduled, but I uh, quickly found a lot of good articles. You found some great articles, so it's uh, going to be a good one today. It is. You know, we usually try to prep. Some weeks are busier than others, uh, but it's you know one of those things where. Uh, sometimes we just got to kind of like throw it together. So uh, I think we found some good ones though. All right. On the first list here, make sure I got my views straight. Um, Yeah, I can go ahead and get started. So open AI, I believe the inventors or the uh, holders of chat GPT plan to switch to a for-profit mode. That makes sense to me, but I worry that they're going to focus more on profits than making chat GPT better. I I don't know what your thoughts are. Actually, I think it will. I think being for profit will make it better. Okay. But the problem is, is that a lot of people were comfortable with it being, that's why it's called open AI because it was open source, is that they were going to share the technology as it advances with everybody, where now it'll be behind a paywall. So the biggest concern that a lot of people have, especially people who are scared of AI is going to be that, well, you know what, now they can develop stuff and they don't, they may not be as open and transparent with the public about what it can do, you know? So there's some, there's some concerns about privacy and, you know, if they decide they want to, to sell to military purposes, those sorts of things, they can now do that. So it gives them the freedom, the agency to 
do more with the product behind closed doors and they don't have to reveal it to the public. That's where people are afraid. Now, I do think profits do drive innovation. So I think it's only going to get better. Yeah. Uh, but I've also think that they, they see the opportunity for how much money you can make and, you know, they're on their way. So it's inevitable. I kind of get it. Uh, they, they claim the for-profit company's valuation could go as high as 150 billion on some estimates. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, wowzers. So, you know, I'm sure they've had some big deals, but this partnership with Apple that we've heard in yeah. our past shows and Microsoft got, and Microsoft, mm-hmm. yes, has got to be such a huge deal for them. So, oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. They're the best in the game right now. So the only real competition are Gemini. And then of course you have, uh, Grok, which is, um, oh boy, Elon Musk, yeah. his version. Yeah. And I think we're going to talk about it here in a bit. There's a meta one that Zuckerberg's behind, but I don't remember the name of it, but we'll get to that here in a moment. All right. Next one makes me sad, but it's so true. <sighs> Disney Plus, they are cracking down on password sharing. That's the bad news. Now the good news is they are taking a page out of Netflix. I will give Netflix credit. For a reduced rate, like six bucks, you can add an account uh, that somebody can use elsewhere. And that's not bad. And that's what, you know, we're doing with like our kids that do not live at home. Uh, So I'm glad they give a pathway for that. But this, I just, I do, I get it. It's all profit driven. I just do not agree with this. I, I just, you should be able to watch it anywhere all the time and do password sharing. What does it matter if you do password sharing? They should make it to where... Uh, it's concurrent streams, but they don't do that because they now know because Netflix started that way. Right. But they now know that, well, shoot, there's so many options for streaming. You don't have to worry about people streaming at the same time because if they're not watching Disney plus they'll just time to, well, well, I'll go watch Amazon prime yeah. or Netflix. Yeah. I don't agree with it. I mean, we pay a fee to do what we want with the service. Really? I mean, we're paying to access the service. Uh, we've talked about geolocation and stuff like that. How are they going to determine that it's not you on vacation or something? So perfect yeah. example is I'm taking my tablet phone uh, with me to a work trip all next week. I'll be watching Disney Plus or Netflix or something. How do they not know that I'm the same person unless they've already logged it's, my device's yeah. ID? It's IP address and time. That's how they do it. Okay. Now technically they could grab your mac address which is your individual id uh, id for your device but i doubt they're really doing that i'm sure they have that data um it's well they, they do have that data because they know how many devices have logged in and from where but from what i understand this is done by your ip address and time so they know your house for example is what what its ip it shows as from your internet service provider and then they log that and they're like okay Doug watches typically from this, and then they do an average. Now, you're about to go on a trip. You go on a trip, you go to a hotel, you get on your phone, your tablet, you watch. They'll let you watch. What they look for is a threshold that if you are continually accessing from a different IP address that's not your house, like over the course of a certain period of time, oh, yeah. that's when they that lock it down on you. So, so you should be able to travel. Yeah. My argument to that would be, you know, traveled a lot. (laughs) Well, that and we provide for you have children. I do not. But you provide for your children or your kids, Mm -hmm. you know, know. so you pay their subscription and they're away at college. Their perspective is that they should be paying for it. And that's why. And the reason why they're arguing that if I scroll down here, it says here, last day to get this is why they introduced this Disney plus basic for six dollars. And it's ad level. And it's not just Disney. Netflix is doing it, too. The reason why they're introducing a very lower cost uh, stream with ads is because their excuse is, well, they should have their own. That's why, because we have a low tier now. That's their justification. To me, I still see it as a money grab. I I agree. I think it's BS, but anyway, be forewarned our, my friends out there. Stop sharing your password. Well, they're going to crack down on you. So don't be surprised. So, so here's the kind of joke to it. You need to use it more than the rest of your household. Like, so you don't lose your access. Like, this is the dominant location. Try to trick it somehow. There is a way you can trick it. I've looked into it. Uh, it's a pain in the butt, uh, but there's an easy way to trick it. 
you can set up, not that we're advocating. We want to be clear. I don't want to get sued. Yeah. We already got a copyright violation for showing a YouTube video. <laughs> so, but you can uh, set up a VPN and you can mask as long as, for example, if you had a kid that lived in another state, you could set up a VPN to where it masks and looks like it's coming from your house every so often. The downside is they're going to have to like unplug whatever their Apple TV or their Roku, and they're going to have to plug it into a box and do this whole thing. Oh, so yeah. it's not ideal, uh, but yeah, it can be done. You're going to need some help at the home front then. Yeah, yeah. But you could do it. You could do it. All right, let's go on to the next thing. This was big news. Um, this was funny, honestly, to me. Because at they, first I thought they were launching this as a product, but it's not. It's a prototype. I'll let you go ahead and take this one. Yeah, so uh, Meta, and if you don't know what Meta is, it's the kind of parent company that owns Facebook and some other uh it is Properties, Facebook. Uh, they changed their name, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I think Facebook's the product now, but they changed the company name from Facebook to Meta. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Mark Zuckerberg, I believe I got his name right, he is uh, inventing or starting to uh, work on some Facebook glasses. I looked at the article, and if it, everybody kind of remembers Google Glass back in the day, it's kind of uh, putting up some kind of holographic or mm -hmm. actual video display over your eye. Mm -hmm. I think it sees through it. It's kind of in competition to Apple's uh, Vision Pro, but uh, I, there's no price point. It's still in development. Yeah, the, so the background behind this, and the article doesn't get into it too deeply, but I did read an article on this. So, I mean, you're looking at $10,000 to manufacture this. They said what is very neat about it is the little wristband allows you to control movements. And I guess that's, they said that's very futuristic and it worked really well, was the wristband allowed you to manipulate the digital things that were overlaid on top of the glasses. The biggest thing is they spent just insane amount of money to develop this, but it's so much money to manufacture that they can't sell it uh, at a decent rate. So the reason why they came forward with it, they just wanted to show people what they developed, at least to get something out of it, because it's probably not going to come to market, um, at least no times, you know, soon, because it costs so much money to make them. So this is not a product that I think we're going to see next year or anything. So, Yeah, it'll be interesting. The thing I worry about is uh, in, say, 10 years in the future, we're just going to have sensors and wires and all kinds of stuff all over our body to uh, run all these products. It'll be like uh, cyberpunk. And so I, I'll have Ripper to bring dock. back my Android battery packs and I'll just be battery packed out like all over my arms. And <laughs> You're going to need batteries for all that. Instead of like a tactical chest rig for your magazines and fire and stuff, go. I'll have battery, battery packs. Everywhere. Battery, quick change. Well, and the rumor is, is that the Apple Vision Pro may have a more affordable version that will be launched soon. So that'll oh, be interesting. Nice. All right. Let's see. What's this one? Ooh, more meta news. Uh, Meta's new AI made post opens a Pandora's box. Oh, I didn't read about this one. You have to tell me about this one. What happened? Yeah, I kind of skimmed through the article. So they are going to start adding a AI bot or similar like thing for you to create posts and memes and uh, AI generated pictures on your Facebook. Uh, and is Facebook the only one they have or do they have? Uh, they, they have Instagram as well. Instagram. Okay, yes. And they also bought WhatsApp, if I remember correctly. They own a lot. Yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about AI and AI generated things on this uh, podcast. I really believe there needs to be a non-removable watermark saying that this was AI generated. That's just my thought. No, that's and that's one of the things that they talked about doing because they're worried. They, I was just, we didn't put it in the news, but I read that uh, the government just fined some uh, group that did robocalls. You know, you get the phone calls, the spam calls, and they're like soliciting for money. They had used a fake Joe Biden oh, to man. try to get money. And for some organization and the federal government cracked down on them. I mean, so it's already beginning, you know, the misuse yeah. of AI. Boy, just think of all the all the tricks you could play on your friends with all this AI deep oh, fake absolutely. audio. I know one friend in particular we could really mess with. 
Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do that. That's okay. yeah. <laughs> he go. knows who he is. He knows who he is. He's a big gullible. <laughs> Uh, but no, a lot of people are just saying that um, the feeds within Facebook will be filled with stuff written by computers rather than a person. Uh, that's that's like the big stretch on this is that you just type in there what you want and it puts it on your your post. So blurring the whole reality versus, you know, what's real, what's not kind of thing. You know, I'm going to go on a soapbox here for a little bit. I remember and back in the day, back in my day. Right. So. Facebook has gotten terrible, in my opinion. I really use it just to connect to family and friends and class reunion. I've been doing that for the last two or three months, big class reunion. But now when you scroll your feed or you scroll down looking at all the stuff, there's so many ads. There's pages you're not even liked or subscribed to. And really? it's just junk. So I got I mean, off of it a long time ago, so I didn't know I'm that. I'm about to get off of it. Yeah. If it wasn't for just... Connecting. Staying connected. It's so easily connecting to other people and events yeah. and stuff. That's hmm. the only reason I use it. Huh. Didn't know that. Huh. Well, I'm glad I'm off of it. I don't need to stay connected to nobody. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about something cool, like yeah, the Nintendo yeah. Switch. Uh, you had one for a hot minute. I did. <laughs> it was uh, burning in my hands, and then I got this uh, Steam Deck. I'm loving it. What do you so mean fun. it was burning in your hands? I was just like, woo hot commodity but i need to get rid of oh, it. i thought you meant like it actually felt hot oh no no it ran great okay good yeah you decided to, to switch it up and go with the steam deck instead but the switches are pretty cool they're pretty awesome yeah but uh, this coming out with a new one yeah go ahead man this is so the yeah. nintendo switch 2 leaked online and yeah uh, you know my theory about leaks is the yeah. company actually leaking them or yeah corporate corporate angles right but yeah, um, we don't have a lot of details. I mean, a leak kind of, it's a leak. It shows you a couple things, but it's not confirmed. It's not uh, set in stone. Yeah, I was looking for the, they claim there's photos. Oh man, I'm going to be opening this live here. hope it's real. Oh, it's like 3D renderings. That's yeah. what it is. So the rendering shows the console has a larger 8-inch screen compared to the uh, 6.2 now. Or if you've got those OLED, OLED switches, they have a 7-inch screen. So you're getting a little bit bigger screen. There's a they comparison. also say yeah. there's a different placement for the LED lights on the Joy-Con controllers. That was, excuse me, those are the two little controllers on the left and the right side mm -hmm. of your screen. And uh, going through, you know, the USB-C USB -C ports, I can't talk today, on the top and bottom of the system to help you connect different devices, keyboards, uh, more controllers and stuff. It looks longer. If this is accurate. Yeah, I guess with the 8-inch screen, it's got to go corner-to-corner -corner expansion a little bit. Well, this will be nice. Probably bigger battery, too, if it's got a bigger screen. That's I would hope so, yeah. Oh, and then they actually have a build. So who knows if this is real? Yeah. I mean, you know, again, we were just talking about try to be fake careful. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Say that again. I was just saying with leaks, you know, I watch a lot of phone leaks. Uh, you got to be careful because somebody's just trying to get their 15 minutes of fame and say, hey, this is the real device. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can see this being legitimate. I mean, it yeah. looks very similar, but we'll find out. So now knowing Nintendo, they're so stubborn. They may they may change the uh, the design just to just because somebody leaked it. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, I could see them doing that. Oh. Uh, Anyway, I got a billion of these tabs open now. Let me close these bad boys here. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, Switch is an awesome device. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad they're moving forward with it. Uh, Sony obviously is seeing with their portal. There's rumors about a Vita two, uh, okay. so that would be awesome. I, I love the Vita. That was a great device. So it'll be interesting. I, lo I love that handheld. This the the Switch and the Steam Deck are really driving this value demand about being able to have all these games in your hand. I love that that's happening. I think that's great. Competition's good in that space. So I'm excited to see what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Starfield. Dude, hey. the release is happening into this month, right? Uh, yeah, it's happening in, what, uh, three days? Yeah, Central Time Zone. We're looking at uh, 11 a.m. Central yeah. on September 30th is what it looks like. So I've seen a lot of companies doing this, and I'm sure from your perspective as an IT guy, this helps their servers not to crash and have yeah. any issues. 
of uh, region releases. So we're looking at a map for those not watching video of times across the entire world of when this uh, update's going to be pushed out. Yep. Are you going to pick it up? Absolutely. I uh, paid the kind of higher price way back when Starfield came out. Oh, you just get it, don't you? You did the yeah. Fancy so I shouldn't version. have to pay an extra fee. Hopefully. Yeah, you did the you did the fancy version. If I remember, I'm gonna have to. I think I just did the standard. But I don't think the DLC price is that bad. I'd have. To Do you get the DLC if you have Game Pass? Uh, I would assume so because you're unlocking the full version with Game Pass, aren't you? I would think so. Yeah. I was trying to find it. Uh, here we go. Here we go. While the, the base game of Starfield is available on Game Pass, you won't get access to the Shattered Space DLC. Look at oh, Microsoft no. grabbing that cash, baby. Making that money. Mm. Making that paper. They, How will you be able to... learn so, best from EA and microtransactions. They did. It says you will be able to purchase the expansion or, oh, upgrade to the premium edition without buying Starfields if you're a Game Pass member. So they're saying that you don't have to buy the core game. You can just buy the DLC. Uh, wow, that's kind of sketch because I still would question whether or not the core game. This is the problem with digital for all these. The, this is where the argument of all of the collectors come into place, and they are right uh, in that that whole thing about when they can take it away from you. Now, if you buy it digitally, it is yours. It's more of the issue of them including it uh, inside of a service like game pass you know or or even playstations so but it looks really good i'm showing footage of it here and it's the varoon right that's the storyline that they're if i remember correctly yeah i believe it is so varoon is very mysterious uh if you haven't played the game they're kind of this religious uh cult i would have to say they worship a, a snake or something yep and there's a mystery uh home of uh, Varun, this planet, and I think that's what the Shattered Space DLC is going to do. Yeah, because they don't, they're just a mythology in the core game. You don't ever like really run into any true Varun. Uh, I think you may have in one mission, if I remember Have correctly. you beat the game yet? <sighs> don't touch me. No. Well, I don't want to <laughs> ruin it for you. I know. No, I haven't. I need okay. to. I, I was just telling, like, I want to play this. I'm going to get but I need to get back into the game and play it again. But it's that same thing I had was with Skyrim, do I start completely over? Right. You know, I have a, I have a pretty powerful character, but then when you load the character back up because you haven't touched it in months, you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? <laughs> like, yeah. what was my emphasis? Like, where was, was I, I a jetpack guy? Yeah. Was I, you know, was I a yeah. lock picker? It's just like Skyrim, where I can never remember what my character was about. Now, the good news is you can take all your points away and reallocate them, if I remember correctly. But I believe you can, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's awesome. I love Starfield. A lot of people hate yeah. on it. I think it's a great game. I, I uh, yeah, I'm a I've, fan. I uh, liked it uh, since the beginning. You know, I just looked at Steam. It keeps some stats. I have over 350 hours in uh, Starfield. Do you have more hours in Starfield than you do Skyrim? Oh, I can uh, check that here in just a sec. That Mine's not be, as easy uh, to check because I, I play on so many different things. You know, I play on my. Yeah. PS5 for Skyrim. I have quite a few hours in that. I have to add them all up is what I have to do. Obviously, my PC, my Xbox. So I'd have to add it up. I don't know. But the footage looks really good. It does. Um, while I'm waiting for Steam to load, there have been some uh, updates I don't know if we talked about before. One of them is the access to a vehicle for planet exploration now. You can drive now. God. Instead of a walking simulator, you now yeah. uh, can drive yeah. across the planet. You're making me want to play this now. Yeah. Dang you. And I think it's just going to like a ship uh, manufacturer and there's an option to buy the vehicle. Well, that's easy. I love that. Yeah, I need to get, I need to get back into this game. It's such a good game. <sighs> Fun All times. Right, Did you ever find to... your hours pop up there? If not, I'm, I'm going to continue on. Uh yeah, so I've got it beat. So 186 on Skyrim, 350 on um, Starfield. Dude, you played more Starfield than Skyrim? That shocks me. But Skyrim, I love it. I need to go back and play it again. Yeah, yeah, that's it's such a great game. All right, all right. Next one, the Nintendo Museum. This thing looks 
awesome. It looks amazing. It's opening October 2nd. Yeah. So we're just a couple of days away. But I think a <sighs> so good. plane ticket to Japan would be a little expensive. So you know what, though? It'd be worth it. My wife and I talked about our next big trip in a couple of years is going to be Japan. And oh, I think it'd be great. I'm thinking this is like a must. Like, And you know, maybe they'll do like a U.S. version of it. But you know they're doing it right in Japan because that's origin. Everything about this the theme between the the restaurant, the cafe they have in the shop. Oh, my gosh. I've seen so much footage of people like getting uh, previews to walk through these exhibits. Yep. And it walks you through like the history of Nintendo and it has, oh my gosh, it looks awesome. It has it the power, cool. you know, just all kinds of stuff. I, really cool light guns. See, they set up the light guns. And even they have the scope, the zapper scope on a oh, yeah. wall. The super scope. That. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Well, it looks you know, fun. The crazy thing is a lot of people don't know. And I think it was in the 1800s is when Nintendo was started. If I'm right, it mm. was a. Uh, is that true? I don't know. I believe I may be wrong, but it started as a card trading, uh, like uh, playing cards. And stuff. I do know that it did start. Maybe dang, not dude. the eighteen hundreds, but eighteen eighty nine in okay, Kyoto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they started off with uh, playing cards. Yeah, dang. games like that. Look at your memory; it's on lock today. Ooh, thank gosh. Oh, here, here we go. We got ourselves a little bit of a video. Hopefully, we don't get taken down. YouTube. Sorry, I'm bitter. <laughs> Uh, but Miyamoto, uh, he, this is just great. They're talking about you know all the different things that you can do. Um, they talk about the original like toys that they made. Like this was a pitching machine for you know like tabletop or wiffle balls. It looked like, and it's just great, man. They got these. Not only do they have the history, but everything's interactive, and you can play like the games. I, this looks like such a fun place to go to. Look at all that with the zappers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they said here in the 1970s, Nintendo had innovative bowling alleys with these shooter, um, I you know, kind of like backdrops, and that's what they're recreating with these galleries, these shooting galleries. So it looks cool. really cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it looks like a blast. Look at that. It's like just a massive wall. That's what we need in like current arcades. You think that'll catch on? Maybe. I mean, it's just gotta be like a projector, and there's gotta Absolutely. be a way you can do it. I mean, it looks huge, and it looks uh, super fast, like the recognition of the light scope to the wall there. It does. I would just love to use the Super Scope again. Oh, yeah. It had some I, really good games. Yeah, I never owned a Super when Scope. When it had a little... Did it have a screen or no? What, the Super Through Scope? The, uh, no, I don't okay. think it did. Okay. I don't think it did. Um, but it's been a while. We'll have to research that or check with one of our, our friends that are game collectors because I'm sure they'll know. Look at the massive controllers behind him. Behind oh, Yamato. that's amazing. The original. So that is super, a Famicom. Yeah. Uh, we're looking yep. at, I believe. Famicom, and there was a Super Famicom. Those were their names for the Nintendo. Yeah. Such, man, it makes me want to go to Japan and see this. Look, they should talk about their cafe, which is all themed food. Uh, then, you know, <laughs> just looks like so much fun. This so is a good thing. Just looked up the flight. Uh, it is a 16-hour flight from uh, our location to Kyoto, Japan. If I, I don't care. Right. I would do it. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. They show all the games, like the board games that they made, too. Look at that. Yeah, and I believe that's way back. There's a BB gun or a rifle. Yeah, yeah it's yep. a BB I gun. I believe I that's back when they were making toys and games yeah. and stuff. So, so it would be a really cool to see that. Yeah. The other thing about Japan is we've watched some other uh, YouTubers and talked to people at cons about going to retro places in Japan, like retro gaming stores. Oh, yeah. That's what uh, uh, Mr. Rightway had a great video recently where he had gone to, he's gone a few times, but um, where he goes to this. The prices uh, seem dirt cheap. I know it's in uh, yen, I believe. Yeah. But but, uh, converting to uh, US dollars, it's cheap. They're yeah, cheap prices. It's because it's it, yeah. I mean, that's like the seed of where stuff is origined from, you yeah. know. And yeah, it's it's so much fun. I love watching those videos of people walking into the shops and then seeing all of the, uh, you know, especially the ones that didn't get ported over to here. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the different games like the international where the artwork is different on them. Oh, some of the artwork is amazing for the yeah. uh, uh, PAL versions. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, the power with the different uh, different TV color standards where yeah. we had yeah, the NT standards. So anyway, totally would go and check this out. Maybe I'll talk to my wife and if we ever do go to Japan, absolutely, uh, I will Group take trip. Here we go. Tons of video. Oh, you want to come? You should Absolutely. Come. That sounds I gotta awesome. I got to get a passport though. 
Ah, oh, cake. We can take care of that. <laughs> Good article. That's awesome. That's a great one. I love that one. All right, we got two left. Uh, so let's see here. <laughs> Amazon rocking on into uh, th- you know this is popular now. Mm-hmm. Taking existing IP because they want to make money and they're turning it into you know new things. But they're gonna make RoboCop a TV show. What do you think about that? Uh, I like RoboCop a lot. I never really dove into the comics and some of the other lore of the show, but just the mainline movies I got into. In the comics, supposedly, some way how, and I haven't read them, but RoboCop is tied into Alien, the of course, tied into, universe? tied into Terminator. Oh, all in the same universe. That's yeah, good. there's supposed to be a way of tie I'm, I'm sure there's some kludgy way they did it, but hmm. uh, that would be interesting. But you know what? I love Rings of Power. I know a lot of people crap on it. I think it's amazingly done. I read that they may not renew it, though, because the viewership isn't great. Uh, but I really, really hope that they continue to seek out IPs like these and do them well. Yeah, we were just talking about Netflix doing uh, Terminator Zero. I do like, oh. like you said, that we are bringing back some of these and putting a different spin. You know, mm-hmm. you get a different writer, different director, and it can make a series that's like, uh, okay, into it. Like, oh, man, this is amazing. So, well, Netflix is smart because they're on this run of doing anime. And I, I was just telling you before the show, I started watching Terminator Zero on Netflix, yeah. which is anime. It is really good. Now, it is like kick adult. your – oh, dude, it's like kick your For face in. only, yep. Like you're not even 30 seconds in and the scene that oh, opens, man. it is violent. But like, I think I'm it's that right now, dude, it's so good. The story is good so far and it's, it, they are just doing a great job. And you know where that's smart is that the production value on doing animation is probably the bar and the cost is probably lower than obviously doing live action. Yeah. So I think it's wonderful that they're doing that. They're doing that with Tomb Raider. That's another anime one. And and then a few others. I'm always sending you. It seems like they're always trying to recreate these. So I'm all for it. I, I'm enjoying the Terminator one. Well, and I could be wrong, but I think the American public as a whole, it doesn't. And I may be getting some flack for this. Isn't into anime. I mean, there's, there's a massive cult following massive of anime cult for anime, but yeah. the whole general public, I would say general public, probably yeah. not, but yeah, I, I, I think it's great that they're doing it. It's very well done. You got to check it out, man. It is so good. Yep, I just added it, so uh, it's going to be on my list. All right, this next one, I have some mixed feelings about (sighs) Blizzard, which is now owned by Microsoft. Uh, They have some great IPs. We're talking Diablo. We're talking just Warcraft. StarCraft is one of their unbelievably awesome all-time games. They're trying to make it a shooter, a first-person shooter again. I don't know if it's first-person, but it'll be a shooter. And this is like their third attempt at doing it. Here's my question, Doug. Why the heck would they do this and not just make a part, you know, like a next iteration of the real time strategy? This would be like, oh, we have Command and Conquer. Let's not do another Command and Conquer top down real time strategy. Let's do a first person shooter, shooter Command and Conquer. What? Why? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Command and Conquer Renegade is what you're talking about. And it yeah. was terrible. It was I terrible. I know they keep I trying. Mean, it, it was kind of cool to go inside these uh, bases that you're building from the top down view. But then I'm like, no, this game is terrible. Huh. Yeah. And then they're showing here the four minutes of remember Starcraft ghost. That was another one that they did. Uh, that was a shooter. Now this isn't first person, but it's over. It's a third person over the shoulder. Yeah. Now we have a, a good friend, Matt H that uh, loves Starcraft. And I think he's, Still playing it today. We'll have to talk to him this weekend about his yeah. thoughts. But I yeah. know he's big, big, big into StarCraft. It's such, a, it, it's such a great game. Now, I did read they're adding, I think it's this month, they're adding the StarCraft, the original top-down uh, our, our real-time strategy. They're adding the whole bat, what they call the Battle Chest version, which is every DLC. They're adding that oh, to Game nice. Pass. So if you have Game Pass... Uh, you're going to be able to play the OG StarCraft. So. And I'm I, sure yeah. it's remastered for Windows 10, Windows Oh, yeah, 11. I'm sure it's upscaled and everything. Yeah, yeah we'll have to tell them about that if you didn't yeah. know about that. It's a great game. But either way, I just don't agree with them making it a shooter. Why? Yeah. No. <laughs> Come on. People want another StarCraft. I don't know. It's big in um, some uh, like Asian countries for well, competition. Have, yeah, I was yeah. just about to say that. 
Yeah. Big competitions. Yeah. Huge. Like it's very popular. And the strategy behind them is just uh, watching some of them play. Yeah. yeah. I love, I know, I love watching like when they do like the, the, the blitzing with the, the create as many of the Zerg as they can. And it's just like a flood going into bases. And just watching some of these players play yeah. is so impressive. And it's an older game, but. I mean, it's you still... know, you bring that up in other countries. I think it's a big thing to have like gaming lounges. You know, we used to yeah. have internet cafes. <laughs> yeah. Now we kind of have gaming cafes. I've seen a couple here in the states. Yeah. But I think it's more prevalent in other countries. Definitely, they have a different approach to it, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool when they do that. All right, I think that does it for me. We had a lot of news for not being prepped. Yeah. What's we up uh, found a lot of stuff uh, at the last minute. All righty. Well, this next one's kind of a surprise because I honestly I didn't know they did this, but it's it's good for just in time before Christmas. Yeah. So let me go ahead and get this. So bad. as you're setting it up, uh, Amazon is actually having I think their second Prime Days of uh, this year. Yep. It's going to be October eighth and ninth. Uh, as always, you know you're going to have all your deals on your Amazon based products, uh, all their smart devices, their Echoes, their Kindles, all that stuff. But some of the things we're going to talk about here kind of got my attention. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool they do this like you got Black Friday, yeah. but it's kind of neat that they're doing it even earlier. So if you want to get a jump start on your Christmas shopping, I think that's yeah. kind of cool they're doing it. You know, so, yeah. the uh, first uh, Prime Day deals of this year, I got that. I no, I got the AirPods cheap. Ooh, I mean, the pros, like, right? Uh, hundred dollars off or something. That's really they're good. Two fifty on Apple. I got them for like one sixty, one fifty, whatever mm -hmm. the math that works out there. So yeah, hundred bucks. Yeah. It's a good deal. You can grab some good stuff if you keep an eye on it. Now, they've gotten flack in the past because some people who track um, products all throughout the year, sometimes they're not that great of a deal. So you have to be oh, careful. Yeah. You can get awesome deals. Oh, there. That was the thing that we were talking about. So the AirPods, not the Pros, but the AirPod 4s with the active noise canceling, the ANC, they're already on sale with this Prime deal at $169, which is $10 off. Now, if you know Apple... They're typically not quick to put things on sale yeah. as soon as they launch. But this is, you know, if somebody needs new AirPods. This is a pretty good deal. Now, if you don't want noise canceling, they have them for one nineteen. It's not bad. Yeah, and those just got released what two weeks ago, three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you know that that's something that somebody so to probably kind of give perspective the airpod 4s are 129 on apple 179 on uh, apple as well so or okay yeah the so active noise is 179 the standards are 129 so yep. that's kind of your price so. yep so 20 dollars off one 10 dollars off the other roughly yeah or maybe uh, 10 and 10, actually. I don't know. My math isn't working. My math ain't math in today. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, the next uh, one I'm excited about, I uh, since I'm in this iOS world, uh -oh. I've never had AirTags. And I know yeah. you've told me they're good. Like, I'm, I'm going on this trip. I should have bought one to yeah. throw into my luggage. I've not used them yet, uh, but I'm going to definitely pick them up because they're, they're usually about 30 bucks. It says here it's $4 off. Um, now, they have a four-pack that's $79. That's not bad at all. Yeah, not Especially bad Especially if they're... Typically twenty five dollars. I mean, you're almost getting one free, but they're really cool for tracking stuff. And I've seen people do all kinds of cool stuff with them. Um, I I've mean, seen people put them on their dogs and oh yeah, on their kids, which that's kind of weird. But I saw a dude like <laughs> buried something in his backyard, and he waited like so so long or whatever. And then the way he found it again was through he put the air tag in with it. It was almost like a time capsule, oh, but nice. he waited so long for it. It, it was it was interesting. Well, that's interesting that the signal punctured through whatever enclosure yeah, he had. It did. And the dirt and the He did. Yeah, it was impressive. I gotta so give me one of these. I want to get into those because they're supposed to be really you're right, for especially for travel, man. S slap one of those in your bag and you're good to go. Now I have been like when we travel, there's settings on them and I don't understand it because I haven't used them, but it can drive other people nuts because if other people have iPhones and you're walking past it, it'll pop up and give you a message that because it uses it's other not... yeah, it uses other iPhones to triangulate yeah. where it is and to report that it's lost and that sort of thing. But that might be because of whatever settings you have. I don't know because I haven't use them just yeah. yet but i'm, I'm gonna get into them now i'm glad you kind of warned me because this will be my first time with an iphone in an airport i kind of wonder if my phone will just be blown up with people's air tags and stuff it could it doesn't happen often it doesn't happen often that's why i think it's a settings whatever settings they have it 
So now we, going down the Apple line, we were talking about the Ultra Watch too. Look at that, man. Six eighty nine, one hundred and ten dollars off. Yeah, oh, you're killing me, Smalls. Because I, I, I don't know. I like that Ultra too. I'm just does worried. Get gonna... closer to Keith's. Uh... It does. It does. <laughs> it does. Shut up. I, I just worry it's going to be too big. Yeah, you know, we have a friend that has one. I'm going to ask him to to check it yeah, out. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of rocking the uh, new ten on my wrist. It's 46. Mm-hmm. I believe the Apple Ultra Watch Two is 49. That's I mean, big. that's uh, quite a bit bigger. Uh, we'll find out. I we have friends that have them. I'm, I'm going to find out and ask. Yeah. All right, you got iPad, uh, 50 bucks off, 2.99. Yeah, that's not bad. You got the MagSafe cases if you want the official silicone cases. And then Beats, which, by the way, Apple owns Beats. <laughs> it's the Kim Kardashian version. <laughs> it must be fancy. Well, you get two years of Apple Care, though. That's kind of cool. So $100 all, 279 Yeah. Not and bad. then as we're scrolling down, like I said, uh, Amazon's always going to discount their own products. They oh, yeah. own the Blink uh, camera system, so some good Blink deals there. Mm-hmm. They also own Ring. I is that they do. Right? Yep. Yep. So yep. They, they do. got the ring doorbell cameras uh, and uh, security cameras there. Those are always um, good. Fire tablets. Uh, mm-hmm. Keep going down the list. Now Google's got some deals. Oh, look at that. Their Pixel Buds Pro 2. It's going to be a mouthful. Yeah. But uh, you also get a $30 Amazon gift card. So okay. that's pretty sweet. That's cool. That's cool. I like how they're like bundling gift cards with it. That's not a bad yeah. idea. Let's see. You got the Anaker Nano Power Bank, which Doug doesn't need anymore because no he has more power banks. Yeah, good. <laughs> but that's a good deal, though. It is. I mean, eight, 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 thirty-two bucks. That's not bad with a connecting USB-C. Uh, they do have MagSafe power banks. Now, this will blow your mind. Oh, you can with that MagSafe on the back of your phone. Yeah, you, you take the power bank and clink it to the back, and it charges your phone while it's connected. Mind blown again. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? I, no, I did not. Yeah. Yeah. So it just sits there and just okay. just like it's identical. Like I have my uh, pop socket. So like, just like that. You have the same. Yeah. Except it's got a bump on it. It's got a battery and it starts charging it. It'll ding oh, and it starts charging it. Well, you I can go even longer. Yet, Doug. That battery has been amazing. So you could go even longer. But look, it's only twenty eight dollars with this deal. Eighteen dollars. I mean, off. that's cheaper than the power banks I've bought before. Yeah. Not it's just say it's a 30 watt 10,000 MHAI. That's not bad. Yeah. You may want to look I into that. I think I've got a 20,000 milliamp. Uh, so. Now, that would be good for traveling as well. Yeah, even though yeah. you may not need it. You, you don't have to. Yeah. Anyway. When I see, uh, you know, talking travel, the TSA are more accepting of battery banks and stuff now. Sure. I think they, they were a little leery in the day because you always read about. Yeah, you get it. You can't take yeah. lithium on. Oh, yeah. They were dangerous. Airplane. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You get uh, iRobot vacuum cleaners as usual. Great yeah. webcam deals. I'm just looking for like smart plugs if you want to like smartify your house. But look at this subscription streaming deals. We were just right. talking about how expensive this is. What do we have here? Uh, Amazon, yeah, Music. Amazon Music. Amazon Music. You know, I'm still mad at them because I had the zero plan. Like uh, I had Amazon Prime, but not Prime Music. Mm-hmm. And it took away my ability to go to the next song. So now it's on shuffle. Oh, okay. Unless you have Amazon Music. So just a heads up, it won't let you go song to song. It lets you shuffle around. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, some services I've never heard of. Dash yeah, Lane? Yeah, I think is... Uh, it's live TV. Got a bunch of sports and stuff, too. Okay, I got you. It yeah. says it's $50 for one month, which is $30 off. Jeez, that's $80 a month. Yeah, I think that's yeah, mostly was a... used for a lot of uh, what we Sports. call soccer, but Amer- uh, European football. Football, yeah, when football makes sense. Uh, use code, uh, I've never heard of Dashlane. Oh, it's a password manager. Interesting. Even the, you know, for apps or you know, password service and sharing and or being able to keep your passwords, it's not bad. $39 for a whole year? Yeah, not bad. It's not bad. I hope they do more of that. Because now streaming so big, it would be cool to have that for like Black Fridays and that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, going down now, we've kind of missed these, but they did have some uh, deals on IMAX and oh, they Apple did. Mouse. All these are expired, it's telling us now. Apple Pencils, okay. uh, some SD cards, those deals have expired. Oh, they had right the 8-bit dough, you know, oh, Ultimate C yeah, gaming $15. control. $15. I mean, Jeez. that's crazy. Jeez. We should have looked at this a little earlier. But... I know. Well, I didn't know they even did this, but yeah. the and 
but that's still not bad. It's like I just clicked on it, and, and another tab is yeah. like twenty bucks. So it's like five dollars. Well, you know, off. in two months we're gonna have actual Black Friday. Yeah, I know. And we always talk about like the tech and stuff that you can pick up uh, for Black Friday. So yeah. that is true. That is that is coming. All right, man. I think that brings us home. We are good. Another episode in yeah. the bag. Now we are going to be taking a break next week because, well. We're going to be very remote. Uh, we're going to, we did it last year and it's a, it's a place that uh, it's not really camping. You have like a cabin, right? Yeah. How would you explain so, uh, it? Every year we go to this little kind of resort on a river uh, in our home state here. Uh, no TV, uh, no Wi-Fi. No cell uh, signal. But you have a cell signal. Self, they're starting to get cell phone signal, which you, I don't like, actually. You might get this one bar. A place for me to disconnect. You might get one bar if you stand on like a hill. Yeah, though. I usually turn my uh, phone on airplane mode the whole time, and because the well, just uh, if you don't, your battery phone. will drain because it's always searching for a signal. Too. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's very remote, uh, so we will not be having a podcast episode next week. Uh, so, but we will definitely keep everybody in the loop as we move forward uh, on this. We have some really exciting uh, stuff coming down the way, and so everything from a surprise for Doug because he's got a birthday coming up. Uh, to special guest, and we're really excited about uh, how we're going to close close out this season too. So it's going really, really well. Uh, Doug, bring us home, man. Yeah, I'm uh, enjoying my Apple journey. I will continue to share things on this podcast. Uh, I'm still learning tons of new stuff. If you have anything for me that you like about your phone, even if it's still on Android, let me know. I still love we, Android. It has a yeah. place in my heart. We appreciate everybody coming in, listening or watching or listening and watching. And hopefully YouTube doesn't get mad at us for the videos we show. I know. Continue bringing you some content. I know. Hopefully not. They've been kind of picky. That algorithm hasn't been liking us. That's okay. And it's funny because it's videos that are sourced off of there. Yeah. So I don't know. And we're only trying to help the company uh, spread the word. Whatever. I'm trying not to be bitter, but we do have a store, though, so do not forget. Uh, it's getting to be cooler in a lot of regions in the United States. Uh, and if you're listening elsewhere and abroad, it may be cooler where you are, because I know every now and then on our little algorithm, we get a hit that somebody from like Norway or something is checking it out. Get a hoodie. You want a hoodie. That's what Absolutely. that's that's my point. You want a hoodie. And I yeah, did we, see something really cool on there, Doug. I think I'm going to add it if I can. Uh, we can now do. Uh, we talked about this before. We can do custom coffees. Oh, nice. a wired nerdy coffee. So look at that. Good. Yeah. And then uh, one of the other elements that I thought would be cool is just the other day I was playing with some of the AI stuff and I took mm-hmm. our logo and ran it through it and told it to create some AI generated versions of the wired nerdy logo. I think I'm going to take some of those mod them out a little bit and then maybe we'll have a whole AI series of shirts and, and hats like that with a little bit of a different logo variant on it. So I'm thinking about us doing a little promotional thing on, on our store with yeah, some AI good. art since AI is a big part of what we talk about all the time. Absolutely. Anyway. So, that's it, man. We'll catch everybody next week. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining us. We will talk to you soon. Take care. See ya.